Hey guys, my name is Mannequin, and today I wanted to talk about how to uh, get your get vocals that you found to sync up with your music and your track. So, um, first of all, you need the vocals, obviously. And so I'm just going to go Destiny Time. This is the remix I've been working on. And uh, I'm just going to drop in the vocals here. And you actually need the original track also. So keep that in mind. Um, and I'll show you why in a second. But, uh, da, 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 creating overview. Sorry about that. So give it a second here. I actually know what BPM this is in because it was given in the uh, original track. So I can actually set this to 124 because that's what it's in. And um, actually off the bat, the vocals are still out of time. So, um, did it? Okay, I guess it finished. Anyway, um, so, so I know the vocals are slightly out of time, uh, but that's just because I've used them before. So uh, sometimes if you're lucky, once you figure out the BPM, they'll be on time. But in this case, they're not. So, uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull up. I have the original track here. I'm going to mute this. And um, basically, what I need to do is I need to find the BPM. Logic does have something to do that. Uh, so if I go to metering, BPM counter, and then do this, I should be able to just play it back and it'll tell me the BPM. Sweet, so it gave me 124 and that's correct. And um, But if this doesn't work, you could use um, some software like Mixed In Key to find the BPM of your song. And I'll actually try to find the key of the song too. But um, so, so give that a shot if this doesn't work. But uh, otherwise, um, that's, that's what you need to do to find the key there. And once you have the key, you could get rid of the original track. And now we just work with the vocal. So this is where things get a little bit more difficult and not quite as draw, drag and drop, click and whatever. So um, I need to go and music, my samples. No, I wanted my kick drums. Where's my, there we go, that one. Okay, so I'll just grab a kick drum, anyway. And there's actually a reason I'm dragging this kick drum. It's not because I'm gonna do something complicated or fancy. It's actually a very rudimentary technique. So, first of all, you need to copy it a whole bunch of times. There! Okay, so um, so now I have this copied over a whole bunch of times and actually listen to the vocal. Just, just static electricity. You touch moving to the sound. So, what I'm looking for here is what consonants or sounds or whatever are going to be on beat. So, in this case, just, just static electricity. the stat... Um, ka and te are going to be on beat. That's just what it sounds like. That's kind of what my brain is going like. So, um, just, just, just static. so guessing based off of that, this one right here needs to line up with that line there. So I'm going to drag, which one is it again? Just static. Uh, it's this one, yep. This one right here needs to line up with that. So I just move it over and that lines up quite nicely. You can uh, find adjust it by holding, I believe it's uh, control. And then you could adjust it in small increments if you need to, or you could just zoom way the heck in. And, uh, but I'm not, I don't need to worry too much about that just because this is kind of, it is pretty much close. Enough. Actually, let's just be picky and move it right there. So there we go. And we'll see how that sounds. Now, so this is why we put the kick drum in. Uh, we just line up the kick drum with wherever and um, unmute it and just listen to it. Just, just a static electricity. Your touch moving to the sound. Your lips are all I need. When the music comes around. So it sounds like it just kind of stays um, in the right uh, BPM and nothing goes haywire. So we don't need to do anything else past this point. And the way you tell is not by these areas. Like this part right here. You can't really match it up with that because that doesn't have anything that's like right on beat. But right here, there's something else. If you listen. The ka in comes needs to be... That's right on beat, and it is right on beat. So it actually that that just shows us that it stays in the right time. If it starts to go haywire and the vocals just kind of go all over the place, most likely you have the wrong BPM. 
Okay, so now what we can do from here is actually something pretty cool. Uh, if you pop open flex time right here, and then click this on the particular track you want to analyze, uh, I don't want it polyphonic. I want it monophonic. So um, it'll take a second to analyze it here, I believe. It should at least. Disable, enable. Maybe not. Okay, well, whatever. So theoret. Oh, there we go. It just wasn't showing why because I wasn't zoomed in at all. There we go. So now what we do is, uh, since we have this. Static electricity. Your touch moving to the sound. What we can do is we can actually retime our project. So if I was the guy that liked to do everything at 130, I can bring that up to 130. And you notice that basically it just changes color. It doesn't really stretch or shrink or anything. Just, just static electricity. Your touch moving to the sound. Now, um, just to kind of show you, if I had this at the original and I turn off flex time, this is what happens if I would have done it otherwise. Watch the audio. It kind of like offsets. So, um, so what you need to do is you need to have flex time enabled if you want to change the BPM, but note that changing it like more than one or two BPM is going to stretch the vocals and it's going to make it not sound as good. So like, um, 126 would probably be the best thing to stretch this to 128 is probably okay. There's not too many artifacts when you do that. So that's fine. But if you want to bump this up to like 140, you'll really start to hear artifacts. Just static electricity. Your touch moving to the sound. So there's like a pop there. Your lips are all I need. When the music comes around. Yeah, that actually doesn't sound too bad, but it it, it does depend on the vocalist to how well it stretches and stuff like that. What what the characteristics of the vocal are like. So, um so that's basically, you know, if you want to retime vocals or if you want to match them up with your project, uh, that's basically all you need to do. And uh, if you are, if you like have a pretty bad vocalist, uh, just kind of brief introduction to flex time. Um, if you have a uh, pretty, like, you know, the, the vocalist is off and off time or something like that, what you can do is actually you could add these markers. Once you enable flex time, you'll get these little lines here. Um, you don't want to do that one so much. Uh, well, actually, you could do this. If I click this right here, it adds three markers, and then I just move the middle alternatively and then it just basically just snaps to the beat so you can get things on time really tight um alternatively you could get something like uh where's another good example here um something that's should be on time um that one's probably supposed to be on the offbeat right here so i could just actually drag this and move that but notice it didn't create those extra things on the sides so it is actually shifting everything from the last point. So if you watch, it basically sh shifted this and the rest of that. So if you want to just move one part, uh, if you want to like basically shift relative to that, you can see really what's going on like that, um, then do that. Otherwise, do this little three thing, and it kind of anchors the left and the right. Whoops. It anchors the left and the right so you can move it back and forth without it affecting the entire audio file. And then that's basically just how you retime vocals if they're not exactly on time and stuff and you want to just like get things and, you know, really tighten it up. But that said, don't go overboard. Only do things that are obviously off time and they sound bad. Uh, because typically if there's a little bit of variance, everything sounds a lot more natural and it sounds better in the end. So if it's just a little bit off and you can't even tell when you're listening, then don't bother fixing it. But if there is things that like, you know, they really stand out when, uh, when you're listening back and it is, it sounds like it's off time, then it might be worth going in to fix it. So that's just a little flex time overview there. So, um, so just kind of, you know, for simple things with vocals, you can do a lot more with flex time. Um, but one of the things I do quite often is I go to speed and I could re like change the length of things and it actually changes their pitch too. So it's like slowing them down or speeding them up, um, depending on their length. So that's another thing I do. But uh, that, anyway, that's uh, that's just kind of, you know, the vocals and what you can do with them and a little bit of an introduction on flex time there. So you could have some fun with that. So that's it. Uh, that's all I want to cover in this video. And thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.